بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدنا يا رسول الله يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will talk about a female companion, Durra bintu Abi Lahab, and a male companion, Zayd ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhuma wa ardahuma. So, I'd like to ask, have you ever heard of the great companion, Durra bintu Abi Lahab? May Allah be pleased with her. Well, let me tell you some uh, stories, some, and let's have some lessons out of the life of Durra, radiyallahu anha. She is the cousin of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her father is Abu Lahab, the uncle and the worst enemy of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this Surah Al-Masad talking about Abu Lahab. And it, uh, he starts with, may the hands of Abu Lahab be ruined and ruined he uh, and ruined is he. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. So this is her father. Her mother, Umm Jamil, is the carrier of the firewood on the day of judgment. And she herself will add the fuel to the fire that will burn her husband, Abu Lahab. And of course, she will have her special own severe punishment. His wife, Abu Lahab's wife, is a Mujamil, and she is going to, to have to carry the firewood to flame the fire for Abu Lahab, and she will have, she herself will have a cord of fire around her neck. They were both the worst enemies of Sayyidina Muhammad. Dura's brothers are Utba, Utba ibn Abi Lahab, Utayba ibn Abi Lahab, and Mu'attab ibn Abi Lahab. So with this family, yet we love Durra so much. And today, more than 1400 years passed after her death, we say, May Allah be pleased with her. So her being the daughter of Abu Lahab and Umm Jamil the, does not detract from her value at all. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear in the Holy Quran when he revealed Ayah 15 of Surah Al-Isra من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها ولا تزير وازرة وزر أخرى Whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of his soul and whoever errs only errs against it and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another So each and every soul will be accountable for its own deeds no one, no one is responsible for the action of any other person. Unless, of course, he is the one who uh, uh, urged people to do bad. So this is the only case that people will be responsible for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has chosen Durra and her two brothers, Utba and Mu'attab, and guided them. He guided them to the light of Islam. 
and her conversion to Islam and her escape from her father and mother and her running away to God and to his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was impressive and it was very surprising. So Dura, may Allah be pleased with her, challenged her family for Islam. She announced the word of monotheism. She converted to Islam and became a good Muslim. And one of the female companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Before Islam, Dura had married Al Haris ibn Nawfal ibn Abd al ibn Abd al Muttalib. And she had three sons with him Aqba, Al Walid, Abu Muslim. But Al Haris never, never became a Muslim and he was against Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and he was with Quraysh when they fought uh, the Battle uh, of Badr and he was killed during the Battle of Badr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, uh, would reward Durra during her life. So he, re he, uh, he made the great companion Dihya al-Kalbi propose for her. So Dihya al-Kalbi was one of the most beautiful, handsome, and good-looking people to the extent that Jibreel alayhi salam sometimes descended from the sky in the, in, in the image and form of Dihya al-Kalbi. So what an honor did uh, Durra receive marrying this companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day, some woman said to Durra, bint Abi Lahab, you are the daughter of Abu Lahab, in whom Allah says, may the hands of Abu Lahab be ruined and ruined is he. So what does your immigration to Medina, what does, you, what, what does, what does this immigration do for you? But mashallah, Dura was, as we mentioned, a very, a very respectful uh, woman. She, she uh, practiced the best of morals and she did not argue with them. She did not argue with them. And this is the first lesson we have in this, in uh, the story of uh, Adura. If you know that you cannot convince people of your point of view, do not argue. So she went to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she told him what happened. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, sit down and wait. It was the time for uh, Zuhr prayer. So the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that led the people in the prayer, then he sat on the pulpit and he said, O oh people, مَا بَالُ أَقْوَامٍ يُؤْذُونَنِي فِي نَسَبِي وَفِي ذَوِي رَحِمِي what is it that some people harm me in my lineage and in my kinship? Whoever harms my relatives has harmed me. And whoever harms me has harmed Allah. The living person is not harmed by the dead. And no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. So what a great religion is that which commands justice and enforces it. No one is accountable for the deeds of another one. We have to remember that on the day of judgment, we are going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will ask us, who will talk to us, about what we did in this dunya. Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anh, showed us what to do now in this dunya to be saved later. He said, Take account of yourselves before you are called to account. 
وزنوا أعمالكم قبل أن توزن لكم Weigh your deeds before they are weighed for you فاليوم عمل بلا حساب Today there is work There is no account وغدا حساب بلا عمل But tomorrow there is an account without any work So get yourself prepared We still have a chance to do our best before we die Hence, once we are dead, then it is the end of deeds. So every day, before you feel asleep, take a moment. Think of what you did during the day. Click on your deeds. When you do this, and you find some deeds that you do not like, still have a chance to fix them. If they are towards people, then return the rights of people. If they are towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask his forgiveness. So get prepared for the long journey. The journey that once starts, no one, no one will be able to stop and get any extra provision. It's a long journey. We need a lot of good deeds to, to help us through this journey. Prepare yourself for the greatest inquisition. And remember that the reckoning of the day of judgment is light only for those who reckon themselves in this dunya. Think of your actions, think of your deeds, think of your words during the day. You still have a chance to fix everything. Do not lose this chance. The people in the grave would, would wish to go back to Dinya to fix some problems that they have made. To heal some wounds that they have said with their words. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance and protection. Ask him for guidance and, uh, for, for yourself. Ask him for guidance for your spouses, for your children, for your offspring. And do not forget to make dua for the whole ummah. When you say, astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lil muslimin, you get the forgiveness, you get the reward for yourself and for all the Muslims that you made dua for. And when you make dua for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will please Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another lesson we learn from Dura is that always remember that the environment around us should not prevent us from practicing the teachings of our religion. No matter what your circumstances are, they would not be worse than those of Dura. Dura was living around the worst people, her father, Abu Lahab, her mother, Um Jamil, her brother, Utayba. Yet, she did not care about them all. She left them all to follow Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how strong her faith was. So be strong. Strengthen your bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strive to gain the rewards in the day after. This is what we should be focusing on the day after. During this life, we will have a lot of tests because it's a life that where there is no rest, there is no, uh, if, we, if we are happy and everything is okay and everything is good in this life, so how are we going to enjoy the, the uh, tranquility of the day after? Allah is testing us all in this dunya. And these tests can be to elevate you, can be to get, get, get you more good deeds, or they can be a punishment for something that you did and you know it's wrong and you are keeping doing it. 
So when you have a problem, just think about it. What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, wants me from me in this problem? So strive to gain the rewards in the day after. And hold fast to your religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will never, he will never waste whoever adheres to his religion. So always remember to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the time of prosperity. So he will be with you during the time of adversity. So for those who say we cannot practice our religion, our religion because our spouses do not allow us. Because our uh, boss at work does not allow us. Because we, 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 we are afraid to lose our positions. We so do not blame anyone. Do not blame anyone, but blame yourself. If you are away from Allah, blame yourself and only yourself. Asiya radiallahu anha was among the women who were mentioned in the Holy Quran. She was the wife of the worst uh, person on earth, Firaw. Yet, she was righteous. And we all heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all read uh, ayah 11 of Surah Al-Tahreem when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مْرَأَةَ فِرَعَوْنَ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And Allah presents an example for those who believed, the wife of Pharaoh. When she said, my Lord, build for me a house in paradise and save me, save me from Pharaoh and his deeds and save me from the wrongdoing people. So the secret to this high belief is the great trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the helper. He is the saver. He is the giver. So if you want something, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Durra has done. Durra asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help her to save her from her father and family. So she became one of the companions of Rasulullah So do not say I cannot pray during office hours. Why not? Is working for this vanishing dunya better than the life after? Never, never favor any dunya over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never favor anything over the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, whenever you leave anything for the, of this dunya for Allah's sake, to follow his orders, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward you. And if you don't see the reward in this dunya, then he, he will save it for you till, till the day after. Another, another good lesson that we benefit from Durra is seeking knowledge. Durra, during Durra's lifetime, her relationship with the mother of believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, was so strong. She used to visit her so often just to get the knowledge, to get the wisdom from her. And she wanted to learn about the fiqh, about the jurisprudence of Islam. And the lesson here is that we should always seek knowledge. Knowledge takes a person from darkness to light. Knowledge is an ocean. And the more we learn, the more we, le we realize that there is a lot. There is a lot more that we, we have to learn. 
we realize how ignorant we are. We become more aware of time. We realize how valuable time is. And we remember that we have just a short time to live. We have to take advantage of every second of our life. So don't waste your time. Use it for the benefit that you can get to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use your time wisely. Learn. And when you learn, you have to choose what to learn. And I started with the dua, Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una, wanfa'na bima allamtana, ya Allah, teach us what benefits us and benefit us from what we learn. So Dora, may Allah be pleased with her, was one of the great female companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She died uh, in uh, the 20th year of Hijrah. Uh, that was during the caliphate of Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anh. A life full of wisdom, a life full of experience, a life uh, full of lessons that we can learn from. We move, inshallah, to uh, uh, our male companion, who is Sayyiduna Zayd ibn al-Khattab. Does this name ring any bell for you? Yes. He is the brother of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. We all know Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. And uh, we know how close Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab was to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. During the uh, majlis, during the gatherings, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, would be to the left of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Umar would be to the right of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how close Sayyidina Umar was to uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who is Zayd? Who is his brother? Zayd was uh, a great companion who had love amazing love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he determined to uh, give victory to Islam. He determined to work hard for Islam. He was so eager to get shahada, to be a martyr for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He was a strong character. He was like his brother, but he became a Muslim before, before Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. So he uh, preceded Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu uh, preceded his brother to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and also he he preceded him to Jannah. He was older than Sayyidina Umar, and his nickname was Abu Abdul Rahman. So Zayd radiallahu an became a Muslim earlier, early with his uh, sister Fatima radiallahu anha. But Sayyidina Omar was a little late. He, he was of the first people to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he uh, he lived the uh, incidents of Mecca, everything in Mecca and everything in Medina. He was always with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he witnessed all the battles and he was uh, so close to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So on uh, the day of Badr, uh, of the Battle of Badr, uh, Sayyidina Omar told him, hey, uh, uh, this is uh, my uh, 
a shield, just wear it. And he looked at his brother and he said, look, Omar, I want to be a martyr for the sake of Allah, the same way you want to be. So both of them fought without it. And they were, and they were always at the beginning. They were always at the front of the army. And they were always fighting so gravely for the sake of Allah. So he witnessed the uh, battles with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many people apostatized uh, from Islam. They left Islam. And there was uh, the battle of Yamama, and it was the uh, corner point where to separate Islam from those who went away from Islam. The battle was uh, under the leadership of Khalid ibn al-Walid. He was the leader of the Muslims. And those who were uh, who uh, uh, apostatized from Islam were under the leader of Musaylam al Kazab, and uh, he was uh, another, another, his helper was Al Rajal ibn Umthwa. So, what is the story of this person, Al Rajal? Al Rajal uh, was a person who came from Bani Hanifa. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he uh, uh, adhered to Islam. He converted to Islam. So when he came back to Bani Hanifa, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died at that time. So when he came, they found them uh, against Islam. So he apostatized. And he turned away from Islam. So Zaid was so eager to kill him during this battle. And, you know, uh, the battle happened immediately after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Muslims were so hurt and so sad for uh, uh, the, uh, the passing of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They wanted Islam to be above all. So they decided that during this battle, those group of people will be killed. Musaylam al kazab will be killed. So when that person, uh, uh, so when a rajjal was against the Muslims again, he was telling them that Sayyidina Muhammad, that uh, Muhammad uh, wa was saying that Musaylama is the partner of Muhammad in this call. So he made Musaylama a prophet as per the words of Prophet Muhammad And of course, he was lying against, against that. So the battle was so severe. And those Bani Hanifa, they fought so fiercely. They wanted to get dunya they wanted to appoint themselves as the leaders they wanted to uh, uh, destroy islam they wanted to to finish islam and they wanted to be the leaders so this was their intention for fighting for going into this fight for going into this battle and the muslims were killed right and left so many Muslims died in that battle. So when they, uh, the, the army saw that there are so many uh, Muslims dying, 
they were scared. And they, they could not resist this huge army that they are fighting. So Zaid saw what happened. And he was screaming, there is, there is no one to leave the battle. No one should run away. Ya Rasulullah, I am sorry that my companions have left the battle and have run away. And I, I determined that what Musaylama is claiming is false. And we want to end this. And he urged the Muslims. He urged the Muslims. And he was, he was uh, going uh, straight into the lines of the uh, army of the non-Muslims. He was looking for a Rajal who, who was the uh, origin of this fitna. Helping Musaylama. So what he did, he... He, uh, he saw him and he went immediately to him. He fought him and until he killed him. So now, Musaylama saw that his partner died. He wasn't as brave as him. And he felt that there is something wrong and the Muslims started to get stronger again. They, they started to gather again and they destroyed the whole army. So with this, with this companion, with Zaid and his eagerness to, to the victory of Islam, to give victory to Islam and his promise to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is going to do his best for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the Muslims, for, for the sake of Islam. He did it. So imagine, imagine yourself promising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something for his sake and only for his sake, not for dunya, not for people to say that, oh, look at this person, he is doing so and so. MashaAllah, this is a very righteous person. MashaAllah, this person is always in the masjid. MashaAllah, this person is so and so. No. You promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will have, all your deeds will be pure for him only for the sake of Allah only, and not for anything else. Zaid promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will do all his best to be a murder for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he did it. After killing a rajal and after the, uh, this battle, important, very important battle. So the Muslims had victory. And it was always a dream. And his dream was fulfilled. He always dreamt of being a martyr, of being shaheed for the sake of Allah. And it happened at the end of, the, of this battle. So now, uh, there was uh, Zaid was killed at the battle, at the end of the battle. The battle was victorious. Muslims got what they want and the, the Muslims were again stronger than before after this battle. The army came back to Medina, victorious. The banner of the army was flying.
So, Abu Bakr radiallahu an and Sayyidina Umar was waiting for the army to come back. And they were waiting for the uh, uh, soldiers to come back. But Zaid was not with those who came back. Zaid was a murderer. Sayyidina Umar was so sad to lose his brother, but he was so happy again to, that his brother uh, was a murderer for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Rahimallahu akhi. Rahimallahu akhi. May Allah have mercy on my brother. May Allah be merciful with my brother. Sabaqani ila al He preceded me to the two best things. Aslama qabli. He became a Muslim before me. And he became a murderer before me. And of course, Sayyidina Omar knew uh, that he will be a murderer. Uh, if you remember, once Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was with uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Uthman, and Sayyidina Omar, uh, and they were. Uh, on Uhud mountain and the mountain shook so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said be firm Uhud alayka nabiyun wa siddiqun wa shahidan you have uh, uh, the people who are here now are a prophet and a truthful person Sayyidina Abu, uh, Abu Bakr who was named as Siddiq because, because he, he always believed Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi with whatever he said. And Shahidan are the two murders, Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Uthman. So uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an always remembered his brother. And uh, once uh, he said, uh, he said to Mutammim ibn Nuwayra, Mutammim was a very uh, good Arab poet who spoke so nicely about uh, Zaid. He, he said poetry, uh, talking about Zaid and how good he, he was. So he said, يرحم الله زيد بن الخطاب إني لا أحسب أني لو كنت أقدر على أن أقول الشعر لبكيته كما بكيت أخاك. So uh, may Allah have mercy on Zayd ibn al-Khattab. And uh, I wish I would be able to say the shar. This is Sayyidina Umar saying to, uh, to Mutammim. I wish I will be able to say the poetry. And I will, uh, I will, I will be uh, crying. So Sayyidna, uh, so Mutammim said to him, "Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, لو قتل أخي يوم اليمامة كما قتل أخوك ما بكيته أبدا." Oh, Amir. Uh, 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 the emir of the believers, if my brother was killed on the Yamama battle, the same way as your, your brother did, I would never have cried for him. Because I know where he will be. I know where his uh, place is. I know where, his, where he is now. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, ما عزاني أحد بأحسن ما عزيتني به. No one has given me condolences, has said nicer words to me than these words you have said. So even though Sayyidina Umar always remembered Zayd radiallahu anhu, and he used to say, إن الصبا لا تهب فتأتيني بريح زيد بن الخطاب. When the winds 
when the winds uh, blow, then I would feel the breeze of my brother, Zayd ibn al-Khattab. So with these two examples of today, we see the love of the Sahaba to Islam. We see the love of the Sahaba to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we mentioned earlier in the first session of this series, what made the Sahaba these close to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why did they uh, uh, sacrifice themselves for this religion? What made them do what they did? So why, why did they hasten to follow Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why did they leave everything behind, their families, their wealth, everything behind to follow Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And what made them going to fight Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and come back with the faith with a strong faith and with a strong Iman, it was all the true love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So love is not, does not imply just few words to say. Love is to implement, is to be implemented. Love is to be shown, love is to be proven. It's not just few words. No. When you love someone, you follow that person. And the more you love him, the deeper your relation to him will be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ just say, if you love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you and forgive your wrong actions. So all our life is to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to learn from the love of the Sahaba that made them leave this dunya and follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, the best of the example is Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and those companions who were the pioneers to be become Muslims. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya rabbana laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.